Hi, Amy with Experience the Quilt. Today is the third video in our art quilt series. We're going to learn how to make a pattern for our own custom art quilt, and it's easier than you think. Okay, so hopefully you have found your picture for your inspiration for your quilt, and you have gotten permission, if needed, for to use it. Um, I have done a lot of quilts um, that I just use for personal use and practice and I haven't gotten permission and that's usually okay. There are opinions out there that will say otherwise, but if you're planning on posting it, if you're planning on giving it to someone or entering it into a quilt contest, you really need to get that permission. Okay, so that was the second step. So our third step is having the right tools and to make our pattern. So I have my smartphone with my picture loaded onto it. So I, I really just took a screenshot of the picture because I found it on Instagram. I did ask permission from the artist to use it, but I took a screenshot of it and it's just in my photos app. So here it is loaded on my smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, there's other ways you can do this and we'll talk about that too. But for right now, we're gonna talk about my smartphone and my projector. So this is just a little projector from, I got it on Amazon, it was like, I think $40. Um, it's not great to watch movies on, but because it's really real low quality, but it works great to project your picture onto the wall to make it bigger. And that's the reason I have a projector. It is a great tool to have in your studio if you are going to want to make more patterns for your art quilts. I have it set up on this fabric so that it can tilt just right where I want it. Um, fabric books are a great way to like set them up. You will also need, they come with an electrical cord to plug into your power and they come with an HDMI cord. The HDMI cord then to, in order to plug it into your smartphone, you will need an HDMI adapter. And you can get these on Amazon. They're relatively cheap, like $10. And um, it makes it so you can just plug the projector right into your phone. I struggled with making patterns for so long until I got one of these. And the last few years I've had this projector, I've had so much fun making my own patterns in a really easy way. So if you don't have a projector and you're gonna make your quilt smaller, you can print a picture off from the internet. Um, you can also um, make a copy, whatever. This is a picture of a sunflower quilt that I will show you that I made. And you can just put this under a light board on a window and you'll put your fabric over it and trace. But that means it will be staying small. This is less than eight and a half by 11. So you would be doing a small art quilt. That's totally okay. You have to decide at this point what size you want your quilt to be. Are you, do you have limited space on your walls? Do you have a certain spot you want it in? Are you giving it as a gift? How much time do you have? Because it takes a lot more time to do a really big quilt versus a small quilt. I would suggest for this first time quilt that you start small. I wouldn't necessarily do smaller than eight by 11 because the smaller you get, it gets harder to do the tinier details unless you're not doing a lot of details. So I like to do about a medium size, which ours I will be showing you next. Okay, so for the pattern part, you need some form of paper to draw your pattern onto. You can use freezer paper, you can use butcher paper, parchment paper, you can get really big tracing pads of paper. Um, I recommend going on a craft store website or Amazon again and buying rolls of newsprint. It's really cheap. You can buy them in different widths like 18 inches up to 36 inches and it will last a really long time. Super cheap but you can tear off what you need and put it up. This is um, old parchment paper that I used for the sunflower quilt and I took the picture put it on my phone, took a picture of it, or I think it was on the internet, and I just took a screenshot of it and projected it on the wall and made it as big as I wanted to fit the paper. I knew that I'd cut my paper the size that I wanted and put it on the wall, so I made the picture with the projector the size I wanted. Does that make sense? You can move the projector farther away to make the image larger or closer if you want it smaller. That is what I did with this one, but I wanted to show you because the quilt we're working on today doesn't show you 
all, all the same thing. So I wanted to talk about the fact that when I did this quilt, I marked the dark places. I, I, did, I, I drew the outside of the sunflower. I didn't draw every line for every little petal. I didn't trace the middle because I knew I was going to be making the middle with this scrunchy um, uh, bubble technique that I have a video on. You can check out on YouTube how to do that. But I knew I would be already doing that so I wouldn't need a lot of design in the middle. So I just left it open. I knew that I was gonna be cutting out individual uh, petals but I was doing a collage technique and I wanted to, all I needed to know was where the dark spots were and where like this was where the green and the yellow were close. So I wanted to make sure I realized this was a green leaf, not a petal. So I marked that, I marked dark or I marked red and I marked the different dark spots. I didn't mark light or medium cause I didn't, I didn't really care about that part. But if you do, if you know you want something to be highlighted, like a spot of light is coming in at a certain angle, then you need to mark that that's where the light spot, the light is pointing or the light is going to be so you know where to put your lighter fabrics. You can use your pattern here to mark such things, but I find it easier if I have my big pattern already marked out um, so that I know as I'm, as I'm, I like to work, what, as they say, off the cuff improv. So as I'm going, I can go a little faster and um, I don't have to refer to a different pattern. So now what we're going to do is I have my paper all set up for the picture of heavenly light that I'm going to draw out. And I'll just do a quick um, video and it'll, it'll be me sped up, but you can kind of see how we are doing that and how I trace that out. everything in pencil first. Then I got my little handy dandy black sharpie and I traced over everything again. I fixed a few spots I noticed in my pattern. I couldn't see her front elbow so I took the phone, I looked closer at it and I just kind of free handed that front elbow in there. Um, that's the nature of this pattern because she was it's white on white so it was really hard to see. Um, if you have a lot of bright colors, distinct colors, you'll be able to see all your lines just fine. This is a fairly simple pattern too. That's, I suggest sticking with a simple pattern for your first one as well. Right now, um, now that I've traced it all with black again, you don't have to do it on your design board. You could sit at the table and do that. If you have a really detailed um, design, I would highly suggest that sitting at the table and doing it because it takes a lot of time sometimes. But this is just so that we can then see through our fabric to see our pattern. So um, a black Sharpie is really handy. And next you wanna look at your pattern and see what shapes or things are going to be overlapped. So her hands, I don't want to stop her hand right at this line or, or this line because you want a little bit of overlap so it looks cleaner and sharper. So I'm going to actually draw in with my pencil that her hand is going to come down and I usually write like I draw little arrows to say look here this is where you want to actually trace the pattern um, and make it larger so that you can stick her hand under her sleeve so I kind of just give myself little arrows like that these I don't care if they're overlapped I, I sometimes I want them to be um, I might I might just give myself arrows to make this bigger or give myself a note make larger so I can remember to make it just like a half inch quarter inch even larger so that they can overlap I might do this with this one as well um, every other stripe I'm going to make larger so that they can overlap um, usually you can look at it and see what makes sense what what doesn't her face, definitely, I need to make it a little larger to tuck under her hair. So I'm gonna draw a line so that I can remember that I want it to be a little larger. I'm gonna stick some arrows, just so I can remember. Um, this dress line here, it, I want her hair to go over it. I'll make it a little larger. So I would also do the same thing here. I just draw a little bit of a line 
with some arrows. If you can remember that on your own, you don't need to do that. I tend to forget when I'm making my pattern. Now you have your pattern all drawn out. We are ready to pick our fabrics. So I hope you'll join me next time where I will teach you how to pick your fabric palette. Now, if you have any questions, place them in the comments below. And did you know that here at Experience the Quilt, we do art education and we finish your quilts for you. We do edge to edge quilting and cozy, cuddlicious couching. Send us those quilts at our website at experiencethequilt.com. Whether you drop it off to us here in Boise or ship it to us, we will make those beautiful quilts even more fantastic. I know, I was like, yeah. on my words, you can't talk, I'm on video. Say, so I'm like, Whoa. Okay. I know when it's easier for everyone. Ooh, ooh. <laughs>